Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you some of the uh, advanced drawing techniques that you can use for artistic type of designs, something like this. So this is an airing design done by Shana and it's an interactive tutorial. I'm going to show you how this is cleverly using stuff to kind of simplify, you don't have to create this manually, all of these complex structures. Um, so let's begin, I'm going to load the tutorial. Okay, so I have the tutorial here loaded. It starts with a basic 3D drawing, a 3D sketch, just setting the grid vertices. So it's going to start drawing a line and start simply drawing from point A. Uh, it's gonna type in a value to give it an exact size and an angle of minus one. So it gives it an angle and then it clicks here to finalize it. So we created basically two lines. We created the first line, then we added an angle, we created the second one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to simply mirror over this line that we created over to the left side. So we have this other side over here and we finalize it. So now we have the two lines. We're just going to click, select them both and simply merge them together. I can click Control plus M. And you see if they removed one vertex because where they intersected here in the center, there's a vertex that had to be removed. So now we're going to finalize this sketch going back to the drawing while the same sketch is still selected. So it's going to add to the same sketch. And now we're going to set the amount of edges. And we see we're going to click from here to here and here. So we created this sketch over here. And now we turn on the polygon mode to select this path over here. So what's happening here is that um, polygon mode or face mode for that matter will always select a path until they intersect something. So this becomes one path, this another path, and this another path. So you have three paths. So we select this one and we simply click delete to delete this path. Okay, so now once we have done this basic, we go back to turn on back the lips drawing. I'm turning off the grid vertices because this blocks here. Um, sometimes this inter interrupts, makes it difficult to select the others. That's why it's with default off as well. And we're going to deselect this so we can make a new um, profile. So we make here a new profile clicking here and here a simple small circle clicked over here. Now we turn on the line drawing and we deselect again, so we're gonna make a new line drawing. And we simply click from here to here. It's an artistic design, so it's not like exactly, it's just eyeballing it and we finalize. Okay, so what we've done over here is we've done a basic sketch, the main sketch, and this was done by drawing a line and then an angle, and then mirror that over and then filter in with an ellipse and clipped out after merging them, clipped out the piece. Then we've drawn a separate profile by unchecking it, it starts a new profile in a simple circle, and then we did a new profile align. Now what we're gonna do is we need to copy this line over the entire thing over here, made many copies. So if you're gonna move this spaced equally, it will move out of space, it wouldn't fill this way. So we're gonna need to make a combination of scaling and moving and to fill in this gap. So we're gonna go to copy offset, and we're simply gonna move it by X minus one, and Z is gonna be um, 6.5, Okay, and then we click Add Option, and we're also going to scale it. So we're going to scale it to uh, by 8, and then by 6. Okay, so I'll be very honest, I didn't calculate this exactly, so I don't know the exact calculations from Designer, how this is done, but apparently this is going to make a nice grid-like um, structure. So we're going to make this, and click Copy. So this created these things over here, where this initially intersected that we were drawn from edge tool touching here, but these are all bigger. Now it doesn't matter how big it is, this is the main thing over here, you don't have to calculate exactly as long as you see. The main thing that counts over here is the spacing should be equally spaced, and then that they should be sticking out. Okay, so what's happening here is, just to explain the main idea is, I'm first going to group this, so we're going to click Control plus G to group them, to all group together, okay. So if you have two profiles over here in general, there's nothing you can clip out. In Selfcat, in order to clip out one with another, you have to merge them together, and then they start intersecting, so they will add a vertex at each intersection, and then you can simply remove the others. Uh, but we're going to hear a more clever tool how to do it, but first we're going to mirror over to make the nice grid structure. We're going to simply copy it over, and we're going to make an offset of minus 24.35, okay, and then mirror it on the right side. Okay, so the main thing over here also, it sticks out. It doesn't have to be this calculation. It's not exact. It, the main idea is we're going to clip out everything. We just want the inside structure. That's what we want. 
So the question is, how do we get the inside structure? Now, I can simply merge all of these together and simply start picking this or my key select and select all of these tiny edges and remove them because they will start intersecting. They will add vertices, as I said, and remove it. But we're going to use another tool where it's called a remove uh, loose edges. So I've got a tool that we'll see in a second that can remove loose edges. But for that, I need to make sure they're loose. So what is a loose edge? A loose edge is something that hangs out. It doesn't connect to make a shape, a profile. I mean, a, a polygon or a face. So this is a loose edge. Um, but we don't have actually all loose edges. If you see over here, this black line and this gray line, this highlighted line, these together over here make a polygon. So what we're going to do for that is, but each of these individually are loose edges. So we're going to make it in two groups. We're first going to take one group plus the main object, okay, which is this profile, and we're going to uh, merge them together, okay, total plus M. So now we have these merged together. And you see there's no vertices to be removed because we actually just added vertices. There wasn't any vertex that intersected another vertex. It's just profile intersecting, line and line intersection. And now we're going to go to the geometry clean tool and use the option for remove loose edges. And as I said, because we do this individually, we don't use now the other side. They're all considered loose over here, the outside. So look what's happened. It simply removed everything from the outside. So it just saved some time. We're left with the inside. But now we need to do the other part as well, because we need that. So I'm going to repeat the same process. We merge it. But now, because the other side is already removed, these are all loose as well. So we can do the same flow now. Click on Remove Loose Edges. And voila, it removed everything. So we're done with the basic structure. OK, but this design requires here also not just this. We need to have the inside um, some thickness over here. So how are we going to do this? And this again, this comes down to just understanding the tools. So we're going to use the inset tool. And the inset tool, look how nicely this insets it, but we're going to make it to um, 0.3. Okay, so we have this nice cuts over here, everything, and finalize it. Now this is just still a profile. So what we're going to do here is we're going to extrude this entire shape. And we extrude it by three, and we finalize it. But if you turn on the wireframe mode, you'll see we have this nice structure. And this is the benefit of adding in a profile lines. So you can control how they look like. And doing so, we can select now polygon. So let me just show you. This entire polygon is one thing. You see it highlights the entire thing. We don't want to select this entire thing at once. We want to select only the inside boxes. So we're going to turn on in the advanced settings there's something called part selection. And now we can start picking parts. So this is basically what you want to do. So I can actually do, in, in reality, you need to pick like this. It's not that many. But you need to pick this. But I can also marquee select because I'm in, in a controlled environment of the interactive tutorials that they know what I need to select. But in general, if you marquee select, you will select everything you don't want to select. Um, OK. So now what we're going to do here is we turn off the, the let's see, click on highlight region to deselect it. Oh, I clicked something wrong, looks like. Oh, to select. Okay, I didn't select uh, everything. Okay, looks like I didn't select one of the small, smaller ones in the corner, probably this one. All right, so now I'm going to extrude this one. So here's the thing what's happened. Look what's happened. So we extrude just these parts, but we actually don't want to extrude this to the height. So if you remember what we did before, we extrude this entire thing to 3. Now we're going to extrude this to minus 3. And what's happening when you extrude this to negative 3 we basically leave it, as you can see, the flickering here, the colors, my highlighted color yellow and the blue, the main color from the object. So what we do over here, we make the faces that we just extrude touch exactly the faces over here. And this is a phenomenon that you have in many CAD software that you can use if you have cut intersection on, you can actually use this to cut out. And look what's happening. It actually removed everything. It removed this. Now, this is something that, that works only because they're both flat. If one of the faces would be uh, curved, it wouldn't touch exactly, um, you would need to use other tools. For example, Stitch and Scoop can help you cut this out or other ways. But for very basic stuff, this is a handy tool and quite easy to use. OK, so now that we have this, we're going to, uh, let's see what we're going to do now here. So we're going to deselect this profile, and we're going to select this profile over here. And we're going to do a similar approach now. And we're going to do inset. And look over here what inset is doing. We're soon going to use another tool so just to show you. Inset basically copies all of the edges. It creates lines between the edges. And so we're going to make this shape over here. And we're going to 
deactivate the lines and go extrusion the same flow that we just did we can extrude it by three and we're gonna activate polygon advanced settings part selection select this part and negative extrude by three as well minus three so we get this cut out and now you can see we have this nice flow this nice faces because the way we've done with the inset okay so now what we're going to do here is we're going to simply move it a little bit in the position so it's minus 1.76 we're going to make it slightly move it minus 1.6 just move it slightly more in so it touches basically intersects this object we want it to be intersecting okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to move we're going to select this profile and we are going to union them together so i'm going to click control plus u to union them together and they become a single shape now intersect them become a single shape okay so now what we're going to do here is we're going to cut with plane so the goal here is that we want to do we want actually to um use round object zoom to give a roundness you see this is kind of just flat and the final shape needs to be rounded but we want this surface over here to stay relatively flat so in order to do this, and we have done this in many tutorials, is you need to add another segment on top and another segment in the bottom. So actually, there's probably an easier way to make these cuts, which is using um, over here cube selection and simply deciding how much to remove from top and the bottom and use cut. But the designer is using cut with planes um, and offsetting it by 0 0.4, the bottom plane. So it's 0 0.4. And then we're going to save it so we can add the other plane. And we're adding the other plane is also going to be a bottom top plane. So it's basically the same plane, just with a different offset. And now we're going to make it 2.6. So 2.6, which is basically over here. We, if you remember, the height was 3. So 2.6 basically offsets it over here. The one is 4, and next is 2.6. So we can add a cut on both sides. Now we're not going to, in the advanced settings, it is an option to copy profile to split object. If you choose split object, then you have an option to fill. We're not going to choose any of these. We just want to add a cut. And let's see if you finalize, look what, what it did. It created this line, this uh, loop basically around, and the same in the bottom. As I said, there's an easy way. Um, uh, cut with uh, cube selection probably could have been easier. But nonetheless, they're, they're doing the same thing over here. This is called plane cutting, basically, on both sides. It just creates a complete cut around, around and around and very nice so now once we have done this we can go to round objects take a look we have about 1000 faces now and we can round this to number three which is going to give me um, a lot of faces but at the same time it's 108,000 faces but look how nicely around the top is but still these side surfaces are relatively flat and this is because this lines that we have added kind of added like a barrier where it, it should round to but now the problem here is that we have too many faces. So for this, we're going to simplify it. And this is a standard flow that we do. We add rounding and then we simplify. It maintains the nice structure that was done, but it reduces the number of faces created by the round object tool. So you see over here, we have much less faces. We're down to 60,000 faces. And these are still rounded here where it's needed. Okay, so now we're just going to rotate this object to minus 90, just making it standing up and we're going to deform it so we're going to bend it now the default bending will bend just from one side we want to bend it around we're going to set the middle and then we can bend it to minus 25 so we basically get it curved like this okay so now what we're going to do here is we're going to select all of them and hide them away and we're going to finish with a little bit of another drawing so we're going to make another drawing over here and we create a basic circle and now we're turning on the arc and we're going to draw an arc like this and another arc and this is just a basic drawing to create a shape okay and finalize so we created this basic shape over here and now what we're going to do is we want to add a thickness to it but if you remember i said before we used inset that made this connections that showed all the lines now we're going to use add thickness and add thickness we're going to make it just 0 0.3 just a little bit and you see over here this creates this but without the connecting lines without anything and this is what's needed over here and you finalize it 
Now you could have actually, because they become a single shape, you can go into polygon mode and select this path and delete them. Um, it wasn't removed and it doesn't bother, but yeah, just to say it could have been removed. Uh, but now what we do over here is we give this a 1.5, the other one was 3, so I guess this height should be less. You finalize it. And if you see over here, this was done very nice, but you see these lines actually still visible, this cut here. But nonetheless, it doesn't bother anyone. So now we're just going to round objects, and now we're not adding cuts over here, so it will also round a little bit the side surfaces. So if you see over here, we rounding it actually by less, so it would be hard to compare. Apples to apples, the other one we rounded by 3. But nonetheless, you can see it's mostly, it's not exactly, but yeah, it's also around here, but also this is a little bit rounded, these are not flat. So that's basically the idea with or without adding cuts. And now we're just going to position this, it's minus uh, 270, it's the 270, and rotating it the Y also to 90 degree. This is just positioning now and moving it to the zero position over here. And now we're going to select this, let's see, Y to 35, we're just positioning now, and we are done, 18.5. Okay, so let's see where we're up to what we have over here. So we basically positioned this thing over here onto the airings, and this could have been used actually the snap tool, one of the advanced alignment tools. Um, to align it perfectly here, but yeah, moving manually is also fine. Now we're going to select this, and let's see, we're going to isolate this. So we are done with the basic shape, we're just going to color and make another copy um, mirror to have this other copy. So we're going to make a copy and mirror it along the right side. So finalize, and that's basically it. So we have these basic shapes. So what we've learned over here basically is the main idea how you can work with profiles and do a lot of interesting shapes like artistic shapes like this and mainly using copy offset, the uh, remove loose, the inset. The inset actually uses a lot of technical drawing as well, the, how you can use these type of tools, the, the inset extrusion at thickness. Um, yeah, so quite a few things on profiles, but I uh, hope you learned something new and please let me know in the comments if you want me to show anything else or if you have any other questions. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.